we always get asked. She's actually in the background, but um, she doesn't like to come on video, but she's she's in the background here. And yeah, so we're going to go through some some popular questions that I always get asked. So let's see. What is the one piece of advice that you live by? Bloody hell, that is that is deep to start off with. Okay, the one piece of advice that I live by is something that my mum told me years and years ago when I was younger. I actually at one point was going to get a tattoo on me, but thank God I didn't. And it was choose your stepping stones wisely because that will lead to the path you live. Now, what it means is... When I was younger, it was definitely about like some of the people I was hanging around with or some of the people I was choosing to put my energy to. But just through life, it's just like made me understand so much that every like little small bit, me leaving the dentist led to this. It just leads to so it just always, I just always try and know that like decisions that I'm making now, I need to make me best decisions because it will lead on to a different path. And hopefully that will always be a good path. That was super heavy for the first one. <laughs> what is the best part of your job? Well, that one's dead easy. The best part of my job is the clients, which sounds so cheesy and it sounds like I'm like just trying to kiss someone's ass, but it's not. <laughs> what it is, what I love about my job is I see all the goods and the bad. So you literally like I have like a journey with them so I'll see them on the wedding like before the weddings I'll see them baby showers and then I'll see them in the bad you know the amount of times I've cried in clinic um because somebody's had the heart broken and I can feel for them cry with joy because they've been trying for a baby for years and now they're pregnant so I just love like the relationship you build because when a patient comes into me they are coming with an insecurity so there's always like a vulnerability between us especially because i'm an empath so i feel people so the best part of my job is definitely like the relationships you build with your clients oh my god what is your end goals okay <laughs> she's gone heavy with these questions so Honestly, you wouldn't like believe it, but my end goal is to try and find some sort of peace in life where I'm not always just chasing for more and more and trying to get a bigger house and a better car. And a, So my end goal is to be financially stable enough that me and my family don't have to worry about bills anymore, but to hopefully find some sort of peace in it all where I'm not just always chasing for bigger and better things and to marry Ross <laughs> what is the best part about running your own business the best part about running your own business is definitely being your own boss so if I had have like come up with these crazy ideas that I come up with and told even just the dentist they wouldn't see my vision so they wouldn't see it possible so the best part about running your own business is just having no limits to what goals and where you want to reach also being able to time your own day so days that I need my hair washing I can come in a little bit later or you know if I'm going away I don't have to fill out holiday forms so definitely being your own boss and just haven't been it mind you ella is her own boss and she tells me when she's having off so <laughs> what is one skincare product everyone should stay away from mm, that is a good one i would personally probably say an exfoliate and like cream with the bits in it or actually so yeah that one because they can be really abrasive for your skin they can be overused so some people tend to use them like every day which is insane but also makeup wipes are my pet hate you are literally just wiping bacteria around your face they're disgusting they knock me sick and they are so unhygienic so makeup wipes what will 2023 bring for elegance aesthetics just elegance aesthetics or yeah. the whole okay right so 
2023 we hopefully should be definitely building on or planning on or being in a super build i want a whole super elegant building with everything in it the academy the shop the skincare the tiktok studio the everything i want an absolute mammoth of a building <laughs> to fit all my ideas in one building um but at least just planning for that 2023 i definitely want to be teaching more we are nearly done with the manuals now um poor sophie's been up the wall but we're nearly finished with them so i definitely want to be teaching and just i'm just enjoying this tiktok journey at the minute i don't want to think too much into it i don't want to think because when you look at small businesses and you look what tiktok is actually doing for their business it's insane so it scares me to think of what could happen so i'm just enjoying the ride at the minute <laughs> um oh my god ella these questions where will you be in 10 years so in 10 years i will be 41 I will 100% be a millionaire. I am absolute certain on that. There's no question. There's no question in my mind that I will be a millionaire. I actually told my friend this once and she got goosebumps because she was like, no, you're not even joking. And I was like, no, I'm not joking. Like that is, I'm almost certain. I will be married to Ross. We will have a lovely house. And yeah, that's it. Can't even say about kids because I don't know. <laughs> 10 years, I'll be a millionaire. I'll hopefully not be as crazy on the business side. Hopefully, I can step back and enjoy because 41 is still quite a nice age where I can go on holidays. And so, hopefully, we will have four different venues of elegance. I want to franchise it out so that there's different elegance aesthetics all around the world or just the uk so yeah we'll see and i was a went viral on tiktok <laughs> yeah. what is a treatment you wish m more people knew about a treatment that i wish more people knew about would be body wraps definitely is one the um benefits of the body wrap and just the, how you feel after the body wrap is just amazing so and we've got a nice little setup here you've got the tranquility room you go underneath the lights the music you've got a robe on so body wraps is something um and for the face I'm just trying to think we just do everything don't we maybe mesotherapy to be honest i'm sure loads of people have heard of it but they don't know what yeah. what the benefits of it are because i've never ever to this day done a mesotherapy and they haven't left them booked a course because they just love it that much what is your favorite treatment to do and why so my favorite treatment to do is definitely volume packages or you know um lifting contour and like an aging face that is a hundred percent my niche in the market i am not that good at doing big lips because i don't want to do them i shy away from doing noses because i'm not that experienced but my a hundred percent where i know i am fantastic is working with aging faces and putting the volume back up i absolutely love it because it just I just see people's like confidence growing because you see them within eight weeks and they just always come in and not only do they just look a lot more youthful but they just seem to just be a lot more uplifted and you know you've just put a, a bit of what's gone back in and they just they always look so natural that nobody's noticed what they've actually done but people are like you look amazing like have you changed your makeup or have you been on holiday so I just love that treatment to do because it's just so, so unbelievably rewarding why did you start cosmetology with elegance so i started cosmetology with elegance because boris had locked us down <laughs> it shut me business i thought it was going to be for four months it ended up we're still feeling the effects of it now but what had happened is i had so many clients that were coming for mesotherapy treatment and um 
I wanted them to be able to still get the benefits of mesotherapy treatments even though we'd been locked down and I couldn't treat them so I created the mesotherapy home kit which is the box kit and you get the three serums in it and the jade roller my swell got a bit of promo in now while we're videoing so it was the mesotherapy home kit and the the theory behind it was that you could feel the benefits of the serums that I normally inject into the top layer of the skin. You can put them on at home and you can jade roll them, which penetrates them into the skin similar to me injecting them. So that's why I started. And then, if I'm really honest, it was because every single podcast and every book and everything that I read always talk about you're not making money until you make money when you sleep so that was like my main thing where i was like if i don't use my two hands then i'm not making money i physically have to go into work and inject to make money so this was a way of me making money while i sleep which is starting to happen now i wake up every morning with like one or two orders and i'm like what is the most popular treatment in the Medispa? The, our most popular treatment is 100% our Botox. We all love it. We all get it. Everybody can't live without it. I do it really natural so people love coming to me. The brows still move. And yeah, it's just even people that always think like, oh, I want to get Botox, but I'm not sure. Like when they get it, they're just like, why didn't I do this sooner? What is the worst part about being self-employed? Okay, so the pressure is the worst part about being self-employed. There is a problem every single day that you have to deal with. And then you deal with that problem and you feel like you've you've overcome something and you're all good and you've learned from it because that's the biggest thing you can do is learn and then bang, there's another problem. So that is, it's just, I find it very overwhelming and the pressure but I suppose I put the pressure on myself. And then the other worst part of being self-employed is you are the last to get paid, if you get paid at all. So by the time you start employing, you start expanding, you start, you know, creating side businesses, your money just never is yours. It's, it, it's completely wrapped into things, it's investing, it's what, but, you know, when you see that wage just going out every month and you're like yeah i can't remember the last time i had a wage but i live a good life so don't feel sorry for me <laughs> what would your younger self be most proud of today oh this one makes me feel a bit emotional bloody hell Ella. you've like you've like i didn't know there were going to be questions like this right my younger self would be most proud of just how much I've grew, I suppose, like, yeah, like, just how much I've grew, how, how much I have been through and come out on top, like, most people that watch this YouTube will know me backstory, but if anybody didn't know me backstory, just sort of everything that I went through so young to then, like, go into this is just insane, so I was literally supposed to my plans was that i would have about three kids now and just have my own house and i would just be happy working for somebody else and you know it just didn't work out that way and i am proud of how i overcome that that was bloody deep <laughs> what is the end goal we had that one yeah, we've done that yeah. we've done that where should I start if I wanted to go down the aesthetics career path? This is a great question. So if you ask me and you want my honest opinion, you need to do sort of medical. Um, you can't, it's not a necessity and it's not, don't come at me. But I just think, not because medical are any better than non-medical, that's definitely not, just the stigma. Like, it's just annoying for people that they're just bloody brilliant at the jobs, but because they haven't got a medical background, there's just always this little something. I do get it a little bit with dental nursing because I wasn't an actual nurse. I was a dental nurse. So I went back and done my anatomy, physiology, pathology, which is the same modules as a nurse and stuff, just because you do just always feel. So for people who are so passionate and so good at the job, 
or they started in the beauty industry i just always feel like there's always just a grief to them so if, I, if you were to start from day one i would say go and do something medical because it does give you a great knowledge and it does you know it is extremely useful even just for like first aid and medical emergency so yeah like not for any reason why i'm against non-medics because i'm definitely 100 percent not like everyone reach for their goals and do as good as you can but if you could go back i'm sure if you spoke to most uh, non-medics they would say you know i just wish i had my medic just to shut everyone up really <laughs> Was this always your dream path, <coughs> career path? Um, no, but yeah. So I went in, I've done like every job underneath the sun. Mm -hmm. So I went into dental nursing because I drank alcohol on my last day of school and got told that I weren't allowed to go back to sixth form. And in sixth form, I was actually going back to do dance, drama and media. All my GCSEs are in dance and drama. I thought I was going to have a ballet school. I did not think any of this, met, like, go medical. And then what happened is, because I wasn't allowed into sixth form, my mum then didn't let me have a summer holiday and dragged me to Connections in Broadway. And I asked the woman what makes the most money on the career path. And it was dental nursing. And my mum was like, dental nursing? You don't even, you don't even go to the dentist, you're petrified. And I was like, yep, yeah, dental nursing is. So I started dental nursing. Absolutely loved it. Still love it to this day. Would go back tomorrow if this all stopped. Absolutely think that every kid should just go and do dental nursing. You're never going to be out of a job. It's a fantastic job. And it opens up so much opportunities. But then as I was getting older... I'm surrounded by so many entrepreneurs and people who've got their own businesses, me brother, me mum, me dad, that it was the employment that I couldn't, like, deal with. Like, I just, I couldn't understand that. Why couldn't I just go on holiday and then work a few Saturdays to pay it back, like, holiday forms? And if I was sick, I, I had to stay in because they were short staff. Like, it, like, it just blew my mind. Employment just wasn't for me. And then... I actually got pinups, which was like a salon, and I'd done lashes at first. Thought that I was going to go into aesthetics, but never, ever, ever in my like wildest dreams did I ever think it was ever going to be all of this and what's to come. If you could sit down and pick someone's brains, who would it be? Oh, that's such a good question. That is such a good question. Wow. Hmm. Dead or alive. Oh God, there's, there's a few. Pick someone's brains. Oh my God, I don't need, you've put me like pure on the spot. I'll have to come back to that one. It's put me on the spot. What is your skincare routine? So my skincare routine, it depends on how my skin is acting on the monthly basis that we have if i've got a reaction and if i've got a breakout that i regularly get especially if i'm due on my monthlies i won't wash my face in the morning i'll wash around my eyes but i won't wash my face because what happens is your skin's putting a protective barrier of a night naturally our own science does it so if you then get up and like wash your face with like an acidic acid wash or something you're literally washing away all the goodness that your body's doing so it just depends if not i found this amazing face wash at the minute from Nutrigreena. I never say it right. And it's a non-comodoma, non-oil, which is so good for me because if you get a breakout, it's more or likely that you're overproducing oil. So I wash my face of the morning. On a damp face, I put me Hyaluronic Acid Serum from Cosmetology with Elegance. Um, I put that all over on my damp face and then I go in with my vitamin C and I put my vitamin C underneath my eyes and on my pigmentation on my chin area. Then I will lock it in with this moisturiser. I either use my 2K Retinol Gold Moisturiser but at the minute it's too oily for me so I am using the non um Nutrigreena. It's lovely. I'm going to try and copy some sort of formula of it. Not copy the formula but the consistency of it's gorgeous it's like thin where this is thick um 
and then of an evening I wash my face I have a clean flannel or a muslin cloth at the minute because I've got a bit posh um, every day so I use it morning and night and put it in the wash and take my mascara off take my makeup off it normally in the bath with just a flannel and then I know that's absolutely minty because <laughs> but that's what I do and then um, of a night I will put my retinol 2.5 all over my face and I take two drops of CBD oil I know that's not skincare but it's they're both next to each other <laughs> what makes it a bad day okay so and I always try and not have a bad day it'll just be a bad minute I'm really good at like getting myself out of it like I'll have a breakdown or I'll have a little mini cob on and I'll always like I'm quite like self-aware and I'm quite like in tunes with my own thoughts but definitely what makes it a bad day is cold days i hate getting up and it's freezing i hate it when ross has turned the heating off throughout the night and i don't want to get out of bed because it's freezing um yeah the do i don't really mind the dark nights i like to get in and it's all cozy i don't mind the dark nights a bad day obviously is if i come up with a complication in work which is very 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 unreal but i still get the dreads over it every time i think of it because it makes me anxious um but yeah no i hardly ever have a bad day the only thing that i probably should stop doing is every morning even though i know i check my bank accounts <laughs> every morning like it's like a social media thing so every morning i check my bank accounts so sometimes it's a really bad day when i check that <laughs> bank account <laughs> What is the worst part of your job and why? Hmm. So, I would possibly say how vulnerable I'm making myself to trolls, even though I haven't been yet. It's probably just my mind frame. It's probably something that I'm going to have to deal with as it goes on. But the more I do TikTok and the more I do YouTube and the more, it's like I'm almost expecting it. So it's like I'm trying to prepare for it because that's what I do, which is stupid. But like I was watching somebody's um, TikTok the other day and she said like, it's so crazy how you expose yourself because at first you literally get a few followers and they all like you and they agree and they relate to you and, and this is the stage I'm at now and the feedback's lovely and everyone's so kind and we have people popping onto the live every week to say hello and then she said and then you get a few more followers and some people don't agree and it's not hate and it's not trolling but it's just they don't agree so it's a comment where you'll go oh have I offended someone or have I and then she said and then just overnight it's just Bang, and it's just different people's opinions people hate you people are and I'm like not like I just would rather just not get to that stage like I just don't want to get to it so I think it's just that really but then I think I'm 31 like I can take it do you know what I mean I'm not like a, a kid who's like gonna be bothered that somebody said that I'm fat or sort of I definitely would be bothered <laughs> what makes it a good day so first of all, I always know I'm going to have a good day if I get a car park and spec outside yeah. the shop. That makes it, like, as soon as I pull up and if there's a car park, I'm right outside. Because I love when you can see me sign and me sign a Johnny car. I'm like, today's going to be a good day. Um, I say my affirmations every morning and that is, I promise you, that's not me lying. Every single morning before I wake up, like, I'm, I'm awake, I'll say three things and I always say, like, Anyway, I say three things <laughs> and I'll tell you what I say because it's pure cheesy. So I set myself in a good little mood anyway. Every single time I go to sleep, unless I fall asleep, but every night when I go to sleep, I say things that I'm grateful for. So I, I generally do always have good days. Like that's not me just being like thing going, but I have some bad things throughout the day, which makes it a bad day. But just coming to work and doing what you love is just i'm just so blessed that i get to do this every day what is one skincare product you cannot live without and why it is a hundred percent retinol retinol 2.5 serum is something that i have used since i was 24 i'm now 31 i will use it every single night 
everyone comments on my skin even when I'm having bad days people still comment on how glowy how tight I am the benefits are just crazy it's sold out at the minute so it's not even a sales um, thing but yeah it is retinol what is your least favorite treatment to do oh this is a good one I hate injecting the cupid's bell so because I use a cannula most of the time I don't have to but I hate it when someone comes and they've got no shape and I have to inject the cupid's bow because I know it's going to hurt the patients which then I feel the pain mm. so I hate doing that um, and then um, mm. what's a treatment that actually mm, is it that I actually enjoy it now because I don't do it often but I did used to do semi-permanent lashes now I've got my sister-in-law and one client that comes to me so I actually quite enjoy it but when I was coming to the end of doing lashes I really wasn't enjoying it not enough for clients to tell but that's why I stopped doing it because it was getting to a point where I was like oh I've got lashes in this afternoon and that's someone paying me for the service so I was never going to put out a service that like I weren't fully into and fully enjoying so that's really why I stopped doing them okay so last question if you could sit down and pick someone's brains who would it be it's just like so so good of a question because there's so many Stephen Bart yeah I would pick a hundred percent like to pick his brains but I feel like he was he would intimidate me with the technology that Stephen Barnley is that was called so living it would 100% be P. Louise, of course, because I just feel like I would generally, we would just relate to so much. Yeah, we would just literally relate to so much, like, I feel her pain. <laughs> but then I feel her drive. So, yeah, P. Louise, just love everything about her. I think she's absolutely amazing. I've mentioned her twice in two days. Now, I know she's going to think I'm stalking her. Someone's going to be like, she mentioned you on the live, and now she's on YouTube. I, like, I honestly, I'm not a stalker. Um, Stephen Barnley, I'd love to sit down. I'd love to sit down in a dragon's den type of that, in that sense. Not the tech, tech part, because it throws me. For some insane reason, I don't know why, but Madeline Monroe keeps coming to my head dead. I think that I would just love to hear her side of the story. And like, but when I've watched her on interviews, she seems like really dipsy. So I don't know whether she would be a bit of like a, a letdown type of thing. Or maybe it was an act and then maybe she wouldn't be. Um, and then personally, like personally, I'd love to sit down with my nanny Val again because I've just... XD, I've just done so much and I would just love to hear like I'd love to know what she thinks of Ross because she never got to meet Ross I'd, yeah I just honestly I just love for it like she would be in this clinic every day honestly she would be my biggest client she's about Botox she's about fillers <laughs> she's about any and that I would have done she would have done and she would have been my biggest fan she would have joined TikTok just to be yeah. like my TikTok fan so I would love to sit down if, if I could have any of them it would be Nanny Val so that was really enjoyable actually that was quite nice and I know my mum's gonna sob the whole way through it <laughs> like I'm almost certain <laughs> I thought it was gonna be questions like what is a chemical peel? <laughs> I did not expect that, but it was a really nice surprise. So thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed that little insight to my crazy brain. And subscribe to my channel. <laughs>